Hi there, welcome to Fun with Scratch. My name is Benji and today we'll be learning about if blocks and if else blocks. So far, we've mostly worked with when events, like the block when flag is clicked. But in the last video, we used an if block in the optional advanced section. Now it's time to learn more. So I'm gonna drag out two if blocks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag out if then and if then else. So take a look at these two blocks. What do they have in common? What do you think they do? So these blocks check for a condition, the if part, and execute an action based on that, based on if that condition is true, the then part. So the code in the blocks is not run if the condition is false. The second block, if then else, has an extra step, the else part. When the if then condition is not satisfied, the code you put inside the else will run instead. So how do we use if blocks? Let's try, let's try controlling our sprites movement. We can combine the if then block with the sensing block that we've used before in order to move our sprite around. So let's start by setting up our code. I'm going to drag these out for now because we don't need them yet. And then I'm going to go to events and drag out the when flag is clicked block. So, and then under the motion tab, let's go and grab go to xy. I'm going to set that as 0, 0. So now when the flag is clicked, the cat is going to go to the center of the screen. After this, let's drag over a forever block so our code gets repeated over and over again. So go to control and grab that forever block. Now anything inside this code is going to get repeated over and over once the flag is clicked. And then what are we going to put inside the forever block? You guessed it, an if then statement. So um, first we have to um, find the touching mouse pointer block and, and apply it as the if condition. So go to sensing, grab that touching mouse pointer block, apply it as the if condition, but we're also missing code right here. So we're going to find the move 10 stems, 10 steps block and plug it into the then space. So go to motion, grab move 10 steps block and plug it into the then. So let's try reading this code from top to bottom. So when the flag is clicked, um, if at any time our sprite is touching the mouth, the mouse, the sprite will move forward 10 steps. So let's try it out. I'm going to click the flag, the sprite goes back to the screen, it's not moving, but if I hover over the cat and touch it, it'll move 10 steps. I don't touch it, it stops moving. I touch it, it moves 10 steps. So, great. Now we've used, we've tried using the if then tab, let's move on to the if else block. I'm going to open up a new program in a different tab. This one's called if then else on Scratch. Um, so um, again, let's set up our project in the same way. Add a when flag is clicked block, a motion block, and a forever loop. So go to control, oh sorry, events, when flag is clicked, add that motion block that sets the cat to zero, zero, and then get your forever loop. Now the difference with this one is gonna we're gonna use an if then else statement in the forever loop. So I'm going to drag that in there. So this time we'll do the opposite. Or last time we had our sprite move whenever it was touching the mouse, but this time we'll do the opposite. Our sprite will keep moving and stop when touching the mouse. Let's drag in the if else block and the same sensing block as before. So we have that if else block, but we're going to drag in that sensing block when if touching mouse pointer. Put it here. So, under the else part of the block, let's drag in the move 10 steps block. So, go to motion, drag that under the else, and then under the if part of the block, we can have our sprite say, you caught me, for one second. So, that, that would be in looks. Go to looks and say, um, if, cat's going to say, you caught, caught, that's a typo, caught, another typo, caught me. Uh, for one second. Now, let's try reading our code from top to bottom. So when the flag is clicked, our sprite will move our starting point. Move to our starting point. At any point, if the mouse is touching the sprite, our sprite will say, you caught me. And if the mouse is not touching the sprite, the sprite will keep moving. That might be a lot to take in, but let's try running the program so you can see how it works. So I press the flag. Cat's gonna keep moving until I hover my mouse over it, and then once I once I stop hovering, it'll keep moving again. So I press the flag. Cat's gonna move. 
you hover your mouse over it, it stops moving. You caught me. You take it off, and it moves again. Perfect. So let's take a look at these two programs side by side. So for our if-then program, the sprite will move whenever it is touching the mouse. But for our if-else program, the sprite will stop moving whenever it touches the mouse. mouse. So this one moves when it's, when it's touching the mouse. This one moves when it's not touching the mouse. There you go. So, in the last video we worked on a game that allowed the player to navigate a space dog, Dot, back to her spaceship. We used primarily when events, but the advanced option needs a, an if-then block to function. If you already completed the advanced option, take a look back at your code and see if you can understand the logic. If you haven't, you should be well equipped to watch the end portion of the last video now. If-then blocks run commands based on the fulfillment of a condition, and they're a great way to add some complexity to your code. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching Fun with Scratch.